Hey Beat fans, my name is Alex Liu. I'm the new media editor over at The Beat, and we're over at the Hasbro booth at San Diego Comic Con. We're about to talk to Nick Kelman, the head of story and entertainment at Wizards of the Coast and executive producer of the Netflix series for Wizards. How long have you been over at Wizards now? It's about two years? Two years. Yeah. yeah. How's that been for you? It's awesome. I mean, it's, it's an incredible opportunity. Um, to work on these brands, um, you know, uh, the like so many writers, the thing that that really made me a writer was Dungeons and Dragons, uh, and then years later I started playing Magic in '94, '95, and played it for years, um, and uh, so you know it's the it's the home of fantasy, and, right. and I'm a huge fantasy fan, so it's it's uh, it's an incredible honor and uh, uh, to yeah. Yeah, I mean, you were writing some best-selling novels before you came over to Wizards, right? Uh, I wrote some books. Um, I was a screenwriter for about 10 years before I came to Wizards. Um, That's fantastic. Yeah. And how did you uh, end up coming to Wizards from there? Well, the way the media has been changing, you, you know, the, the, the scripts that I had sold and I was working on were uh, original science fiction. And, but as media has changed over the last 10 years, it has become more and more the creative drivers have been coming more and more from established brands and I just wasn't finding working on my own stuff all that satisfying. So the serendipitously, right around that time, Wizards was looking for somebody who could help uh, take the pre-existing lore and story and, and help shape it and mold it into a way that we could try to get it out into the world uh, in other media. So it was really something I... I was incredibly fortunate that they were looking for somebody to do that at a time when I decided that was something I wanted to do. Mm -hmm. So when you came in, where was the storyline in terms of the development of what would ultimately culminate in War of the Spark? Actually, the War of the Spark, uh, the, that storyline has been, was pretty fleshed out years before I got on board. Mm -hmm. so, um, the, and, and War of the Spark in particular uh, had been uh, pretty closely drafted by uh, the story folks uh, before I came on board. Sure. Yeah. Um, but I mean, you know, it, it, it must have been an incredible experience to have been part of, you know, the biggest magic storyline, you know, in, in, in the game's history so oh, far. absolutely. I mean, it was, it was a strange situation for me to come on board and to be handed this thing that, that I, you know, then wanted to be very, very careful with <laughs> because it, had, it was already in flight for so long and there was already so much uh, amazing storytelling behind it, you know, making sure that we stuck that landing and, and uh, you know, I was super happy with the way that it came out and the fact that it debuted at number five on the New York Times bestseller list was, fantastic, you know, amazing. Um, so, so for me, it was making, it, it was kind of, for my, my part in that was kind of making sure we didn't drop the ball versus getting it off the ground. Sure, absolutely. Uh, yeah. And you know, when you have a storyline juggling so many name characters that people care so passionately yeah. about, like, you know, what are, what are like some of the biggest challenges associated with making well, that work as the, an experience? The biggest, the, uh, honestly, the biggest challenge was making sure that, that, uh, that War of the Spark the novel was accessible to anybody. Mm -hmm. So if you hadn't read the, up the preceding five years of story, we wanted to make sure that this still worked. Mm -hmm. uh, and that that was probably the trickiest part, especially with such an enormous cast of characters and making sure that people, new readers, could understand the lore and the mechanics of the world. And, and uh, yeah. So, so were you, so were you in part like responsible for bringing Greg Weissman in to help write the novel, or Del Rey chose Greg Weissman okay. um, in consultation with us, but but certainly as we worked on so the 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 key events in War of the Spark had been planned out years ago mm -hmm. but then digging into the outline and of the actual novel and then editing the novel that was Del Rey but in conjunction with us so, sure. so we were on board for multiple drafts of that book and, and um, yeah so. and in terms of keeping things accessible I really enjoyed hanging out with Teo and Rat um, you know, I know that we're getting a sequel to the book yeah. later this year, yeah. but uh, you know, can we expect to see more of them in that book or in other future Magic storylines? Uh, uh, I think you, I, I think you have to ask Del Rey that question. I'm not <laughs> sure if, if we have if we have said anything about that yet. Okay, um, but uh, we're big fans of them too. Um, and I was just going to add too on the, your last question with Greg. We actually we brought him up to Wizards for a couple days mm. to really immerse him in all of the lore and character and story. So I spent two full days with Greg going over everything and, mm -hmm. and um, making sure he, he got off to a good start. Sure. Yeah.
Are there any so when you have a when you have a storyline like War of the Spark where characters do die, uh, name characters and in a couple of cases like lead characters, you know, what, there has to be some level of uh, discussion involved when you're making that kind of a storyline choice because like unless you're doing something like you did like was done with Elspeth, these pieces like Gideon are really just being removed from the board entirely for the future of the storyline going forward. Like, how do you come to that decision? Well, again, that so that specific decision was made a long time ago, mm. but but um, before I came on board. But in general, we're making those kinds of decisions all the time, and and there it's interesting. It's uh, um, working when it's a when it's when it's a property like Magic that exists both in a game format and in a narrative format. There's obviously an interplay between the narrative and the game. Sure. So uh, it's it's um, there's a lot of back and forth when we when we say okay if we want to make a, a a if we want to create a life changing moment for a character I don't want to just say that they die because there's other big moments right mm. but it it definitely has to be in conjunction with saying going going down to the game development folks and saying you know if we if this character disappears does that blow up the game <laughs> right 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 <laughs> so um, and same thing with introducing new characters there's always a lot of iteration and a lot of back and forth about um, you know how that character is going to interact in the narrative space and in the game space so it's uh, it's fun it's a fun puzzle so moving up to the present yeah for 2020 yeah. Uh, what was what was were you involved with concepting the storyline for that set? Great question. For 2020. Yeah, in the regards of having exploring a little bit of Chandra's backstory. Uh, yeah, yes. Um, I actually, I find it really fascinating. You know? That was that was a relatively um, th that decision required less development than a lot of the other sure. stories because it was kind of like okay, do we want to get into Chandra's backstory? And the answer was yes. And then that was, you know, and then it became much more about. Um, nailing down some of the w the specifics about okay we're, so we're gonna we're gonna nail down like where she was when mm -hmm. so that was kind of the discussion about all right what is what are we gonna commit to here uh, which is much less of a discussion than goes into a, a more complex story sure yeah and uh, I I I asked because you know Chandra is on the lead banner for the Netflix series she is. What does that mean for her storyline? It, it's uh, she's on the banner for the Netflix series. <laughs> <laughs> Can you tell us anything about it? Look, I mean, Chandra is is the face of magic these days, mm -hmm. and and uh, we love her, and we love her as a character, and uh, so uh, it makes sense that she would be the face of magic on that on that announcement. Sure. Um, so yeah. So what, what was the so can you tell what can you tell us about the storyline for what? The yeah, I, I unfortunately can't tell you anything more than has been already released. Okay. So it's going to feature planeswalkers. It's going to feature planes. It's going to be true to um, the spirit of those characters and the spirit of those worlds. And um, it is it is probably going to be its own continuity space. Um, but uh, just in the same way that other franchises have made that leap and kept fans happy, brought in new fans, um, and and made the characters uh, the same but slightly different um, is is the way to think about it. You know, it's uh, if the example I use is if you know if it's if it's incredibly important important to a character's backstory that their parents have died, mm -hmm. um, that's still going to be part of their backstory in the series. But whether they died when they were six or they died when they were eight. Like maybe that's up for grabs. Based okay, on, so it's on a little that. bit of a parallel multiverse to some yeah, extent. Exactly. It's the characters that you know and love. Yeah. But it's not necessarily the one-to-one, -one, year to year no, sort of and, timeline. No, and it won't. And, and, and uh, yeah, exactly. Um, so that I guess that what that means is that we are going to be seeing some returning characters. Maybe not Chandra necessarily, but somebody who we already know, and it's not just going to be new points walkers. Uh, I can't comment on that. Okay, fair enough. Um, so, more broadly, you know, to talk about the future for a second, Ports of Eldraine, what can, what can you tell us about that? Uh, I think I can't tell you anything about that. Yeah, sorry. I know, I know, you, I know. <laughs> I know, no, 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 it's fine. But, um, yeah. I, I'm, you know, I'm, I'm so excited for the yeah. future of Magic. Like, I, one of the biggest things for me <laughs> You about think you're Magic. excited? I wish I could answer these questions. I'm incredibly excited. So <laughs> it's, um, uh, yeah. Well, I mean, you know, you're, you're helping craft this. You're, you are 
one of the main figureheads in charge of like crafting the storyline now, right? Yeah. yeah. You know that that must yeah. feel that must be an incredible honor and like responsibility at the same yeah, time. Yeah, it is. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's, it it really is. I mean, it's it's um. It's incredibly fun, it's an incredible honor, and yeah, it's an enormous responsibility because there's so much that came before and this is something that so many millions of people love so much. Um, you want to be true to the people that love love the property and you also want to make it so that more people come in and love it. Um, and it's, it's, uh, yeah, it's, it's great, it's a lot of fun. So as we enter a new era, the Magic Storyline, yeah. War of the Spark is finished, Core 2020 is looking back. Yeah. We're now looking forward to the Netflix show, to the expansion of Arena, where we are getting a lot of character development in like small little ways, like yeah, the voice there's been some, yeah. yeah, there's been some fantastic work done on, the, on Arena with, with uh, yeah, just recently we did some really great little, just little bios that pop up. I, I don't even know if they've they've entered the game yet. I think they probably have, but um, yeah, just some Easter eggy stuff that's that's really <laughs> great. Because <laughs> it's also it allows us to kind of be a little tongue in cheek in our as well, which is fun. So. Sure, absolutely. I've loved seeing some of the uh, the quotes from the novel pop up on yeah. the card styles, yeah. and I love like reading the little planeswalker bios that come up in the profile selection. Yeah, you know, I'm excited to see what keeps on developing. Yeah, and. But to, to go back to the question, you know, with this expansion of Magic's brand and identity, with this expansion to new territories, what is your greatest hope that for fans to take away from Magic Storyline as we move forward? Look, I mean, it, it's it's all about the characters. I mean, I mean, if 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 our existing fans continue to love these characters and continue to want to follow them and 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 um, uh, and spend time with them, like I'm I'm doing my job, and then and then also I want new people to meet these characters. You know, it's um, it is astonishing to me how many people who are um, Magic fans and uh, who are working in franchises that are just as popular or more popular, and I can't name any names, but when you talk to them, they literally sometimes say things like, you guys have characters? And I'm just like, are you serious? <laughs> like, yes, yes, we have characters and they're awesome. So uh, I think that's the thing, is like, I really, you know, our, our, the, the property is really about superheroes with magic, and like we just we just want more people to know that, and we want the people who already love them to continue to love them and grow with them and spend time yeah. and care about them. So to conclude, in one word, how would you characterize the feeling of the next year of Magic Storytelling? Uh, one word or one sentence. I, I, it, it's um. It's going to be building a lot of anticipation for what's coming. Okay. Let's put it that way. I'm, you know, I I'm. Think, a, I, I think. Let me put it this way: you definitely do not want to miss the next year of Magic Story because you're going to find yourself doing a lot of catching up after that because you're going to regret it. So <laughs> listen. Yeah. I don't know how much more hype that you could possibly make me, but thank you for very much for your time, thank Nick. Thank you very I'm much for your time. I'm looking forward to the future of Magic yeah, Storyline. Yeah, great. I'm glad to hear it. Thank you. Right. And, and thank stay tuned to the beat for more. We're just getting started.